So Acts chapter 1, verses 12 to 26. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who would become a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in his ministry, in this ministry. Now, this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, al kadama that is, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, know the hearts of all. Show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Good morning, Mom and Dad. So, so why fill the twelfth spot? We don't often think about that. I mean, why did Jesus tell them to? You know, hey, go and make disciples. Oh, by the way, you've got an empty spot in your 12. No, we, we don't see anywhere Jesus told them they had to fill the 12 spot. So why? Well, here's a one key thing to think about that. A after all, if we are focused or the disciples were focused on, well, backwards, right? If they were focused longing for the days of the past, good morning, Pat, longing for the days of yesterday, the good old days, well, then we don't replace, right? If we focus on the past, we miss the plan and the purpose that is yet to come. The disciples knew God's purpose was to evangelize the nations, and they were quick to add the players instead of seeking to bring Jesus back, to pine for the good old days. So could we blame them if they hadn't? I mean, after all, they had just walked with Jesus the Christ. They had just seen the miracles from the Son of God. They had just followed Jesus. They, well, those were the best days of their lives. That could have been their anthem, their theme song, right? Yet they knew that the best was yet to come. Behold, I am doing something new. God told that to Moses. Now, remember, this was after he reminded him of all the great things that had happened in his past. We can't forget our past. We can't forget what has gone before us. But after reminding them of all the great things that had happened, God said, I'm going to do something even greater. God wants to do something even greater in our lives. Each chapter is his movement in you to grow you, to change you, to challenge you, to help you fulfill the purpose he has for you. Yesterday wasn't so bad, right? Today is pretty good, but tomorrow can be even better yet when we are seeking after and following after Christ. There is no retirement in Christ. Do, do you realize that this is kind of an American thing, but do, do you realize that studies have shown that the best decades of an individual's life for potential of productivity is first the 70s 
The second most productive is the 60s, and the third is actually the 80s. But yet, we have this mentality that, oh, I've reached a certain age. I, you know, my dad used to say this to me all the time because, you know, we, we look a little young. I, I had somebody, again, the other day thinking that I was, you know, maybe just newly graduated from college, um, you know, a 20s or something. And I'm like, do, do you not see all this gray right here, you know, and the gray forming here? And, you know, I have a 20, you know, yeah, a, a, a child and, you know, two children in college and 20-year-old. I mean, you know, and... and 21-year-old? I don't know. I forget. Anyways, <laughs> that's what happens when you get old, right? And, you know, and but yet, uh, you know, that, that, that whole idea that as we are growing, it, it's this American mentality that, well, I'm, you know, and so dad used to always say that you're, you're always too young until you're too old. But yet, yeah, 21. Thank you, mom. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I couldn't even remember what day today was. Okay, that's what happened to me, you know, with yesterday. But, um, but that's this idea that we live in that, well, I need to just sit on my couch and do nothing. And yet our impact actually gets bigger the older we get, not lesser. Our impact grows and our impact spiritually grows with each decade. So why do we stop? Why do we think that, well, I need to just pine for those good old days? You know, behold, God is doing something new and he's doing something new in your life. Yesterday wasn't so bad. Today is pretty good. But tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, the best is yet to come. Have hope. And this isn't just for heaven. We're not just talking, oh, I'm waiting for that day of heaven and that's going to be the best yet to come, which it is. But more, it's this deeper growing, this deeper knowing, each and every day growing with Jesus. We shouldn't get towards the end of our life and then go, you know, I wonder. I mean, how do I know? Oh, no, 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 no. The Spirit gives witness and testimony each and every day as we're growing through the pains and trials of life. Yet we know that we know that we know that God loves us, that we love Him. And there's an assurance in our belly. <laughs> now, another aspect worth looking at is, you know, I've heard it said that we should be an Acts church, right? We should model what they did. Individuals who generally say that treat Acts as prescriptive in, in all matters to the church versus descriptive of what God did in that day and time with the early church. So let's think about this, all right, just simply in the passage we read. Let's look at verse 126, right? And they cast lots. So maybe, just maybe in our church, instead of having church elections, instead of maybe asking for volunteers, I should get up on some Sunday, pull out, um, you know, whatever I care to use to cast lots that will draw straws, right? You know, because, well, dice, yeah, that's a little dicey, and we don't want to use bones, chicken bones, right? Because that's a little too occultish. So we'll draw straws, and those who get the short end of the stick, right, will get stuck volunteering. And, and maybe that would work, right? Instead of asking for volunteers, because nobody wants to volunteer anyways, huh, we'll just cast lots, because it was described, him yeah, his prescriptive in Acts. Yeah, no, that doesn't really work, does it? We're not going to do that. Not all is prescriptive of how the church must be. Yet, it's not only descriptive. If so, then, well, 1-8, this commission to us to go into all the world, right, to, to go and make disciples, and that, that description, well, that's only for the early church and not for us now. There's actually denominations that would preach that. We don't believe that. Not at all. Jesus said, don't worry about the wars and all that. What I want to tell you is this. The gospel will be preached to the ends of the earth, and then the end will come. That's the only thing we need to worry about when it comes to the end times, to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth till everyone is heard. That's what will bring the kingdom. But how do we know what's prescriptive and what's descriptive? Well, 
For us and for me, I believe it lies within what we call the Wesleyan quadrilateral. Now, this isn't something John Wesley necessarily created, but it is the way he looked at theology, and it's a great way for us. And we've talked about this before, and, and we talk about it in our membership class and all those type of things, but this is the Wesleyan quadrilateral. You'll see these circles. It's kind of like a Venn diagram, right? And, and, and so when you think about it, you see this big overarching circle of Scripture. When we come up with beliefs and doctrines and thoughts, Scripture must be the guide. Scripture in its entirety, not just one verse of Scripture. Uh, Sarah, when she preached the other week, shared about a verse in Jeremiah, and it was funny because here I was getting ready to preach on it a couple weeks prior when she was practicing this, and and, and she had this verse of, oh, the words of God, they're, they're pent up within me, and I just cannot help but share the things of God, and it sounded so great. But when you read the chapter in its entirety, Jeremiah is going, you, you, you deceived me, God. Well, in fact, the word is basically like you took advantage of me, almost like you raped me. <laughs> he was not happy. <laughs> I preached your word, and now I am a derision among men. They hate me. They throw things at me. Why? <laughs> Why do I even do it? I don't want to do it. I don't want to share what God has put in my heart. And yet, even if I don't, it's going to bubble out because how can I not share when you've put a message in me because you won't let me not share, right? That's what he was saying there. It was a total different context. We can't just take one verse of the Bible and make all kinds of beliefs on that one verse. Judas went out and hung himself. Well, that's not a good verse. Go ye and do likewise. No, that's not a great verse. Whatever you do, do it quickly. Oh, yeah, no. You know, those are three different verses in Scripture, but when put together, they have the wrong message. Does that make sense? But yet we do this all the time. We take one verse out of context. Then we can't just take one chapter of Scripture and make everything based on one chapter. It has to be Scripture in its entirety. Even one book of the Bible by itself, we must have the full testimony of the Word of God. That's why it's so important that as believers, we are reading the entire book of God, falling in love with God in all the aspects. Not And then only, only then after looking at Scripture in its entirety, do we begin to look at, well, tradition. That's the tradition of the church. What has the church done for 2,000 years since its beginning? Uh, then we begin to look at the experience of believers, not just your experience, but the experience of all believers, the experience of those today. And then we go to reason because God has given us thought. God has given us logic, the ability to think. And what is reason? But not feelings, not emotion, but logic, reason. That's how we come up with discerning what is descriptive and prescriptive. Not because I just like it that way. You see, the disciples were in uncharted territory. They weren't sure how to proceed. The roadmap of go, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them all that I have commanded you. Go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the world. That was their roadmap, but yet that didn't give them the 10 easy steps to how to witness in a Roman empire. Just like we're always searching for, give me the five easy ways to share my faith with someone. Well, guess what? It isn't that easy. We've had things in the past, the Romans Road. We've had the uh, four spiritual laws. But guess what? We live in a day and age that is overwhelmingly post-Christian or has, in other words, has no understanding or knowledge of Christianity, let alone a God, because they don't believe that there is a God. They aren't taught that there's a God. We just happen by happenstance. Everything is just by chance, and there is no deity, right? And so how do you use the Romans road and the four spiritual laws with people that don't even know that a God exists? We're living in a world where it's messier to share our faith. Does that mean that we stop? Absolutely not. You know how we do it? We share. 
We listen to where they're at. We listen to the pains and the hurts in their lives. And then we share the testimony of how God has stepped in, how Jesus Christ saved us and helped us in those areas. Because I guarantee you, when God brings somebody to your doorstep, when God brings somebody into your, you know, across the table from you at a, a restaurant or, or waitressing to you or, you know, waitering, they, that God has brought them to you for a reason. And when you hear the hurts that they are going through, you know, you want to give me, I'll give you an example of that. We had a waitress for a while at uh, the diner uh, or mugs and uh, um, guess what happened to her and her family? Oh, they got COVID, um, you know, and this was just this past earlier this year. Oh, and while she had COVID, guess what happened? She had a collapsed lung. Oh, wow. Can I tell you about collapsed lungs? You know, Gavin, who's had how many of them now? Probably eight and surgeries, countless. And, and she was just talking about how hard that was on her. And I was able to speak about how, yeah, we've gone through it. And our son, we've walked through this as our son's gone through it. But guess what? God brought him through. And by his great miracles, God is guiding him, directing him, giving him strength through this. And we were able to witness through that opportunity. The disciples were in this uncharted. They were looking for that, that roadmap, the 10 easy steps, but they weren't given it. They were learning, and as they did, they found new ways. Not all, uh, uh, all they did, we mirror today. Yet their reliance on God, their reliance on prayer, their reliance and persistence is key even to us yet today. When the going gets tough, keep on going. Luke understood that in the midst of the complex, problematic circumstances, God's plan would rise up and override human logic. God would guide, but only when we seek him. I've had people who have come to me and said, well, God gave me a vision. And God told me you need to do this. And I don't second guess that. The problem is, I, I wonder if they were seeking it. And it maybe wasn't even from God. Because if God hasn't shared that with me, and I'll take the perspective and I'll, I'll remember it just in case. You know, because there are times. I've had somebody in church who God gave them a vision one night, a, a, a dream. And they saw me preaching and behind me was an angel lifting me up because I was tired and weak. <laughs> oh, I'll hold to that story. God didn't give me that vision, but they gave them that vision to strengthen me in a time. But there are many people that have used and they will manipulate people by saying, well, God told me you need to do this. You know, I think first and foremost, God gives speaks to you things for you long before he will speak to you about things for other people. But we must seek him. I wonder then about these two that were chosen. These last, you know, these two, you had Joseph who was called Barsabbas and also called Justice, and we have no idea what happened to him. And truthfully, we don't really from Matthias either. History says he was crucified. One report says he was crucified in Judea. Good morning, Janine. Another report says that he died in Ethiopia. Another one said that he died in Germany. So we don't know exactly where he died. But I wonder if they were ever even supposed to pick a 12th. I mean, Revelation does show 12 thrones, and therefore they represented the 12 disciples. So maybe they were. You know, but Jesus didn't say go and pick a 12th. You know, not everything is prescriptive to us today, but the description of God's given power in prayer is. Oh, by the way, on an interesting note, Joseph, or Joseph was more than likely the more popular one. He was known by Joseph, our Sabbath and justice. And so in other words, he had names that were known in multiple cultures. You realize Saul's name was not changed to Paul by God. He was called Saul many times in Acts after his road to Damascus. You see, Saul was a Hebrew name. Paul was a Greek name. It's kind of like, you know, 
my dad. His name is George. But in Span, in Span, 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 in Spanglish, in, 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 in Mexico, right? In Spanish, it's Jorge. Jorge, not George, right? He's known in another culture as Jorge. This individual, Joseph, or Joseph, uh, yeah, uh, Justice and Barsabbas, right? He was known in these other cultures by these other names, these other identities, but not Matthias. He only had one name. He wasn't as well known. He wasn't maybe as popular, and yet God chose him to be that 12th. The church of God, the believers, they're together. They're praying. They're seeking God. They're, they're even following God's will and choosing a 12th, and they're waiting. And the gift of God is coming. We're going to be talking about that in upcoming days. The gift of God, the promise of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, is coming. So God, I just pray that through today and the variety of things that were said and the feeling of the 12th spot of the listening to God's will, not being stuck in the past, but seeing God's growth in us now and for our future. The best is yet to come. Tomorrow wasn't so, or yesterday wasn't so bad. Today is pretty good, but tomorrow is better yet. Every day, deeper and deeper with you we go. And so, Lord, grow us, fill us, use us, work in us, we pray. And we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll go in peace, and I pray you have a great rest of the afternoon.